for one, I want to start giving more praises due to you. Have a show me how to respect and honor to all your apostles and teachers and soldiers out there laying your life down on the front line to push the gospel of truth. This is another episode of Performing Arts, and this is Brother Shemar Basar, and I want to go over real quick to the point, Psalms 51, and I'm going to do one, two, three. It says, have mercy upon me, O Most High, according to thy love and kindness, according to the multitude of thy tender mercies, blot out my transgressions. Wash me thoroughly from my iniquity and cleanse me from my sin. Now, how do we get cleansed from our sin? First, we have to build a rapport. And we have to have faith on the Most High. And then we have to work towards those um, iniquities that we've done and work towards not doing them no more. So that's why we say that, that we're constantly in battle. The flesh is constantly in battle. Okay? So that's one of the reasons we have to build a rapport with the Most High, meaning when you build a, a rapport with someone, you have to trust in them. And they, you know, they have you have to trust in them. And in order to get their trust, you have to give works of example. Okay? So now let's go to um, verse 2. Wash me thoroughly from my iniquity and cleanse me from my sin. So that's how we get cleansed from our sin. Let's go to Hebrews 9 and 14. Hebrews. Nine and fourteen. It says, How much more shall the blood of Yahweh, who through the internal spirit offered himself without a spot to the most high, purge your conscience from dead works to serve the living power? Now purge your conscience from dead works. What are dead works? Dead works are carnal things. Dead works are not spiritual things, okay? And to worship Yahweh, you have to worship him in spirit, okay? So once you, um, that's why it says when you come into Yahweh by believing in him and trusting in him, you become a new creature, okay? Because you trust in him. Though you never seen him, but through the spirit of through the book, you see him. That's how we know he's alive. So another man can't forgive you for your sins. Is the, the one you should be going to to cleanse you from your sins is praying to is Yahweh and his son Yahweh Shah. And Yahweh Shah is the mediator. So he's the one that's going to take those prayers up before they let it go through to the Heavenly Father. So that's why you have to go to the Son. And that's why the Son died for our sins through the old covenant, because the old covenant, there were sins that we could do that we would be put to death. But through his blood, he connect the old covenant and the new covenant, and the new covenant is that we have faith, and we rehearse those righteous acts that we could be saved. There's no sin. The spot will be blemished. It will be wiped out. So, in other words, the reason why I bring this up is because when we first say this prayer, it's, and we go through our prayer, it's it's not man that's going to give us our sin. I mean, it's not men that's going to wipe out our sin. All men do this. All men in the world, whether they consider a higher rank than you, they die just like you. Okay, and that doesn't mean that if one man have, um, because we got to remember that the Most High He judges differently, you know. It says that in the scriptures that um, you give him, I believe you give one of the prophets a cold water like your helper, you get the same reward as a prophet. Because you got men that try to use that they've been out here for like 50 years, 
preaching this word. Then you got men that's been out here seven years and they're trying to use um, status. They're trying to use status on telling you whether you can be forgiven or not. It's not man that can forgive you. It's the Yahweh shot. That's why it's in the scriptures that says that why are you worrying about men? Why are you worrying, excuse me if I'm paraphrasing this wrong, but why are you worrying about what men can do? When men, when you should be worrying about the father of spirits, you could take your flesh and your the spirit in your soul, the spirit, your um, flesh and your soul. He could kill both. You know? So look, if you're going through something, you 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 repented on it. You don't have to wear and you say sorry about it and you move on about that, okay? Whether they forgive you or not, but you sincerely did that and repented, you don't have to worry about what a man's status is. Even if you did him wrong and you said sorry to him or whatever it may be, but you moved on from that, you don't have to keep chasing him and keep chasing him and keep chasing him if the Lord knows how your heart is. And that's what a lot of us get into. We get into too much of being pleasers of men. And there's things that we've done to other men or to a woman or whoever it may be that we feel bad about that we was wrong about. But the most thing that we should never forget is that once we put our heart out there and we really apologize and we really feel bad in our heart and in our spirit. And if they person still don't want to be bothered with us, that's okay too. But The father says in this book, he will forgive you if you do this with no malice or gull in your heart. If you come and correct to the heavenly father and you really repent on these things, you're going to be forgiven. So don't go too much into what men say. A lot of us get into looking up to men. Men are not the straight gate. Men are not the way. Okay. It's Yahweh Shah. It's the spirit. Of the, it's Yahweh Shah. Let me finish this off. Offered himself without spot. We had um, 14. says we had on um, Hebrews 9 and we had 15 and for this cause he is the mediator of the New Testament who is the mediator of the New Testament it's Yahweh Shah who you ignorantly call Christ that by means of death for the redemption of the transgressions that were under the first testament that which are called might receive the promise of internal inheritance now let's go back to Psalm 52. Because I see a lot of men so into, actually, let's go to 1 John. There's so much of men pleases. And then the leaders are used, or so called leaders, will use that they have this under their belt that they did here 20 years, 10 years. But don't you know that just because you did that work doesn't, doesn't give you a spot in heaven for you to be saved. And it might be a man that came late. You could be in this truth for 30 years and you've been out here all those years and cold out here in the public preaching it and then you switch around and then you go back into the regular church. You think you're going to get away with that because you put out all those years of services according to the Most High? And then comes the man that comes, Johnny come lately, and let's say he comes, he only been in here a year, but his heart is no guile. The Lord going to pick that man. Because the Lord ain't looking at about your status. He's looking at your heart. And that's what you guys looking at. You guys got to stop looking at a man because his status. You know, oh, he's been doing this. Look at his works. Look how he deal with other. There's more qualifications to understand what this man is about. His um 
the fruit that he's been that he's been delivering. What is his fruit? How much people? How much um work that he got on his page? Okay, that's a good one. Okay, um, how does he deal with his conduct among other brothers? How is his conduct among home? Okay, it's more than just just him out there preaching the work. What is his good works towards all towards the widow? All of that. First John seven. We're gonna to go to First John. Um, First John one and seven. It says, "But if we walk in the light, as He is in the light, we have fellowship one with another, and the blood of Yahweh His Son cleanses us from all the sin." Now that's deep. It says, "But if we walk in the light, the light is keeping the commandment to the best of our ability, having a good rapport with the brothers. You know, what I'm saying, treat love thy neighbor as you love thyself. That consists of a lot of that." Right there, that law right there consists of, um, um, covers a lot of um requirements of how you look at a man or a leader. Okay, a leader is a man that's supposed to lead righteously. It doesn't make him your house child God. I say that again. A leader is supposed to lead righteously and protect his flock. But it doesn't make him Yahweh Shah or the Most High, Yahweh. If we say that we have no sin, this is verse 8, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. Oh, so let's say you have a leader. Okay, someone is the, the his job. Um, I don't like to say leader, but if that's what it is, that's what it is. Someone that's um, to cover the flock. All right, his job is to protect the flock, right? And not only to protect the flock, but teach them the flock, because teaching them knowledge, wisdom, and understanding of Yahweh Hashem Yahweh Shai gives them protection. So that's what that is. If we say that we have no sin, we desert, we deceive ourselves. Because some men think that they, 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 the people gas them up. Oh, such and such, he's such a this and that and that and that and that. He start taking that. He start letting that pride go in his heart. And he start thinking he, he damn near close to, to the seat of Yahweh So he started getting gassed up. That's that song that I said that I wrote. Don't let it go to your head now. Don't let it go to your head now. No, no, no. <laughs> your brother gets gassed up, and that's the same thing with brothers too. You get a lot of women around. Got you know, and that's one thing I say that was good is that when the men go to teach and they keep it to themselves, the woman won't be no distraction. Because sometimes you get a, a, the women in the same congregation as the men, you know, they're trying, the men trying to press the women, the women's trying to dress for the, um, for the men, you know what I'm saying? Then adultery comes into that God, damn thing, and then nobody's there for your how about Shem, your how about Shai. They're there for their own lust. And that's, you know, they get their own, they, they're there for their own lust. And it says, if we say that we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, yeah, because you acting like you your house are now, and the truth is not in us. That's what the books say: the truth is not in you. And then verse nine it says, "If we confess our sins, He is faithful and just to forgive us our sins. Only your house can forgive us our sins. We have to rehearse the righteous act, not to repeat those sins. Their sins with smoking cigarettes. You know, you got to keep praying. I smoked cigarettes for years." And I just almost gave up. I couldn't stop it. But when I actually put my trust in Yahweh Bashem, Yahweh Child, he took the taste out of my mouth. Took it right out of my mouth. That's a miracle to me because I thought I could never do that. You know? And then you go in front of other people telling them things that they got to do and you still smoking cigarettes.
now. And you still smoke a cigarette. So this also lets you know if you put your trust in him, who's your him, your how about your how about all things are possible. That's the same thing what we're going through right now with this famine in the house. You could study, you could pray, you could find things to do around this house if possible. You could take walks around. You know what I'm saying? Even if this is if it's man-made, if it's not real or not, or whatever like that, put your trust in the Most High, Yahweh. You'll get through this too. You know, and a lot of us see these things coming. Was it this one or this one? 51. Then we're going to end it. And it says, um, so we was at Psalm 51, and it said, Have mercy on, upon me, O Most High, according to thy love and kindness, and according to that multitude of thy tender mercies, blot out my transgressions. Wash me thoroughly from my iniquity and cleanse me from my sin. I give you Hebrews 9 and 14 and 1 John 1, 7 and 9, verse 3 now. For I acknowledge my transgressions and my sin is ever before me. Against thee, thee only. You hear that? Against thee and thee only have I sinned and done this evil in thy sight. That thy might be justified when thou speaks and be clear when thou judge. Okay, so we asking him to forgive us. And at the same time, you want to, but one of the things that's showing that you repent, you will go to your sisters and brothers if you did something that was wrong with them. That's one of the parts of being under the, being under the light is knowing when you're wrong, saying when you're wrong and telling another man to they wrong, that you was wrong. Okay. Now at the same time, that doesn't you for a person to use this as a Christian plantation doctrine, meaning to say that they could say what they want to say to you and disrespect you, and you're not supposed to react because the Most High is a spirit too. He has a spirit of anger just like we have that in him too. So we have to just watch how we um, counter with each other and think about wholesome things to say, you know what I'm saying, even when we um building, you know what I'm saying? So we got to be accountable to that. That doesn't make you weak. You know what I'm saying? That makes you strong. You know what I'm saying? Because we're dealing with in the spirit. We're not dealing with carnal. So that's why I read that. You know, have mercy when you say your prayer. You say your prayer. You um, you give it to, um, you say it to that individual, okay? But they're not looking at it as God or the most high. You know what I'm saying? Only through the straight gate in Yahweh Shah and Yahweh is a straight gate. Yahweh Shah and Yahweh Shah is a straight gate. And that's how it is, you know, and we repent to them and if we wholeheartedly do that, it's blotted out. And that's a promise, according to the Yahweh Shem Yahweh Shah. Shalom.